Mark Hamill did his best performance probably ever in this movie. But uh, I'll start with you, Brian. Okay. Luke. Yeah, Luke, Luke is my favorite character. Uh, them going back to him slightly younger, you know, uh, more like what he would have looked like if everything went well with uh, him in the Force and him in, uh, being a Jedi. He probably, uh, from Return of the Jedi, he, he had a short haircut, you know, now he has like a little beard. And he had the green lightsaber. That was pretty amazing, the scenes where they're talking about um, when they're going back to what happened with Kylo Ren. Uh, I really enjoyed those scenes because, uh, you know, just growing up, you know, Return of the Jedi, Empire Strikes Back, you know, A New Hope, uh, that was my favorite character. So seeing him, it was a lot of, like closure for me with that character uh, from those movies. And, uh, I really enjoyed him, it's, especially with his fighting abilities. Uh, he really improved, I mean, compared to Return of the Jedi. It's, Did you like seeing that green? Like I love seeing that. Even though it was right? like kind of flat back or whatever. But. Yeah, I really love seeing that that glow on his face. Everything about that, just seeing the lightsaber. I, I, I that that was one of my favorite scenes. Just that flashback. You know, I really enjoyed it. Speaking of that, just getting off to that scene real quick. So, what did you think about the whole Kylo Ren? Um, you know, his perspective that you know Luke was willing to kill him basically. There were two really different scenes if you look at them um, through Kylo Ren's uh, point of view when they were showing it. Dark, uh, Luke Skywalker looked very menacing. You can see it in his eyes. Um, he was the, 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 the attacker and, and Kylo was the defender at that point. But then uh, you look at it later in the movie through Luke's perspective and it was completely different, you know. And uh, it could have been him waking up, uh, you know, a little groggy, and that's how he remembers it, because we remember things differently, you know, as it happens. Or it could have been Snoke, you know, uh, implanting a different scenario in his head, because he, he did look very menacing in, in uh, Kylo Ren's uh, perspective. Yeah, how Luke uh, changes his mind in the last second, but Kylo Ren yeah. saw of him. And Luke was was uh, was defending at that point in, in Luke's memory when when Kylo was actually attacking, and which was uh, the reverse of Kylo's memory when Kylo was defending and Luke was attacking him. In Luke's perspective, Luke was defending and Kylo was attacking him. You know, was trying to tell him like, no wait, you know. We get we get a flashback in Force Awakens, and then we get two different stories in Last Jedi. So we got three different things that we, we, we think happened that night, or when Luke decided to give up on the Jedi. So that's that's my problem with it, is that uh, even though we get two different stories right there, we got a, we got a flashback in Force Awakens well, that gave us... I'm sure there's an explanation for that. Um, I don't know if they've really you know, gone into that yet, maybe in the next movie. Yeah, Hopefully. J.J. Abrams directing the next one, he might executive order and overturn some of Yeah, I, I hope that the situation was that... Uh, he broke down the house on Luke. He convinced, or he already talked here. He had like some of the Jedi's already like on towards his side. They left. They trained there the Snoke. There must have been a reason why Luke back, was concerned initially. Came back as the Knights of Ren and killed off the rest of the Jedi. And that's when Luke left. I'm guessing, but I, from Force Awakens, I thought we were gonna get that story that all in one lit. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. It might be two different scenes. Yeah, I mean, there's still another movie that they'll probably. There's a lot of things where the director wanted to go in a different direction too. All right, so now let's talk about the most underutilized characters. Uh, for me, um, it's Captain Phasma. Uh, Finn, what, what were your characters? What about the same? Least underutilized characters. Uh, I have to go with Phasma. Um, she was in one scene, right? When, the, when uh, Poe and Rose were captured. Until oh yeah, she doesn't show up until like towards the end of it. Yeah, like, and it's all part. it's all one scene, right? I was hoping that even if like it's not her actions, like I don't like I don't mind that she fought one time and got defeated. It's that she was shown at towards the end of the movie, and and that's it that she was done towards towards the end of that scene. I I would have been okay with it if they would have shown her earlier, show her menacingly again, just like they did in Force Awakens. Which is why I don't have a problem with her in Force Awakens. Because people say that she didn't do much, but I just like that they showed her enough 
and she had enough scenes in The Force Awakens throughout the film. Uh, throughout the film, yeah. Right the Whereas in this, she did have an action scene, but it was it was, it was all one scene. Yeah. They showed her, she uh, she ordered the execution, she fought, and she lost. I just wish she would have been a little bit more. She would have had a few more scenes. Uh, 100%. Um, same as in The Force Awakens, Last Jedi, the Least, un least utilized character, 100% Captain Phasma. I mean, we've been expecting it from the trailers of, uh, of The Force Awakens. We didn't get it. Uh, okay, we're gonna get it in the next movie. We didn't get it. You know, she got defeated. Like, she has this great armor. She got action. Right? And the blasters can't harm her. You know, so, I mean. Oh, about that. Do you, do you believe that she's alive? dead? Uh, she's, she's alive or dead? I'm hoping she's alive, but I mean, the the track record shows that they're going to underutilize her again in the third one. The ninth one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's either she's... it's possible she's underutilized or dead. Uh, I'm hoping, I believe she's alive. So, the first one, no action scene. Second one, some action. I'm hoping that in the ninth film, uh, She'll probably have two action scenes. The first scene, she, she'll prove how much of a badass she is. And then she'll probably get defeated in whatever <laughs> what way. Yeah. But at least, Unless like, it's an finished. improvement. No action, some action in this one, maybe two action scenes in the next one. Enough to show how cool of a character she is. Enough to uh, to justify how much hype they've been doing for her. With well, a character like that, I, I don't think it'd be that difficult to, to to really utilize well. Moving on with Finn. So now with Finn, um, do you think he was underutilized? Finn, I don't think he was underutilized because he, in the beginning of the movie, it's I think it's perfect that he doesn't feel he did that much in order to be considered a resistance hero. And that's what Rose says, you're, you're Finn. She was impressed that she met him. I like that uh, he didn't feel like he was a uh, he's worthy of, of even being mentioned at all in the resistance and I like that uh, towards the end he he did uh, have enough scenes and he even he attempted to sacrifice himself not no other character attempted to sacrifice himself. Poe every time he uh, was in an action scene where he wanted to fight he's confident he has the confidence that he can get through it so it's not he's not sacrificing himself whereas Finn he put himself in a hopeless situation to try to save the resistance. So I think it's perfect. He, every time he was always wor he was willing to help out somebody else. He never thought about himself. In the beginning, he wanted to help Ray. He wanted to get away. He sold the the, the tracker so that in case Ray came back, she wouldn't uh, put herself in that trap. So in the beginning, he was he was helping Ray. Then. He was helping out the, the whole resistance by going to the to to the the co cracker right to Benito the Torres character, right, yeah. and then he was willing to sacrifice himself to save everybody in that base. Yeah. So I don't think he was underutilized at all. I think he he was perfect. He, he doesn't have the skills. He doesn't have he doesn't have the training to be a fighter. Mm -hmm. But everything every situation that he was in, he was putting himself. Um, he wasn't thinking about himself. So I think he was perfect. I think he was fine. I don't think he was under. His effort was definitely at a ten. Uh, in terms of him being underutilized, I don't think so. Uh, I agree with you, but I think he was misutilized. Mm -hmm. I think you keep you keep him with the Falcon. You keep him with Chewie. You have more scenes with Chewie and him. Uh, you had you stick Poe Dameron with Rose probably instead. The whole scene with uh, Finn uh, going to uh, sacrifice himself. That would have been cool, yeah, but I knew 100% they were never going to do that. I thought they were going to do that. No, I, I, I thought they might have. Uh, no, there's no way they're going to I thought, I thought, like, for, because it's the second of the trilogy. They probably, uh, you know, they, they would have been good. Yeah, they should have. Uh, somebody should have sacrificed himself yeah. to no avail because that's a super weapon. And these little <laughs> junker things probably wouldn't have done it. I think, I, I think he would have been able to... Independence Day, you know, crash. Yeah, maybe, maybe fuck it up a little bit, yeah. where where they send someone to repair it, which buys them more or time. Or blow it Lucas. up. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. But, I was picturing what I was picturing was him crashing into that uh, that bla that the giant cannon. blaster. Yeah, the cannon. It blowing up, the ATs yeah. crashing onto their sides. So yeah. he rescued the resistance by sacrificing sacrificing himself. So yeah. I think he would have been perfect. I think 
don't, your character, I don't think anybody's this, what we haven't discussed, underutilized Chewbacca. He doesn't do anything. Yeah. He's a pilot. That's it. I mean, he breaks down, he, you put the he breaks down, on. he breaks down Luke's door. He doesn't do much. He picks up the resistance at the end of the movie. It was him with the porgs. He kind of almost ate a porg. Yeah. yeah. Maybe not. <laughs> no, I don't know. So yeah, I think he is the most underutilized character. And the fact is that he's so underutilized that people forget to mention him. He's he's not even like in any pivotal scene. And he was one of the main. Yeah, he's one of the main characters. He's one of the, the most important characters that people are excited to have back. In yeah, the, the big Awakens. four. You got Han, yeah. Luke, Leia, and Chewie. Yeah. And, and you got R2, C-3PO. Yeah. But That's you got the main one. four. That's another one. C-3PO, underutilized. He's been underutilized in two movies. R2, C-3PO, Chewbacca, underutilized. Yeah. Um, yeah, R2 and C-3PO. But again, I think that's on purpose. Because they want to so. move on with the new... Uh, Pass the torch. The new character. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I get that, but I'm hoping for an adventure where okay, so C3PO he never he never did he never did anything in the trilogy, except be there. He never had to kill anybody. He never had to do anything. But his dialogue was really good. No, yeah, but what I'm saying is that in the Force of, in the the New Hope, he does help a lot, and but he never has to do any like any actions. It's just him being there and him making decisions. That's how he helped out in the original trilogy. In The Force Awakens, he's in the background. In The Last Jedi, he's in the background. He hasn't done anything. He hasn't made any decisions. He's fluent in over 6 million force communication. He's there for exposition. I, and that's what they should have used him yeah, in, in, in the new ones. So let's move on to Leia, because we haven't really talked too much about Carrie Fisher. And that was her last performance. So what did you think about her performance? And what did you think about the whole her using the force? Leia's obviously not going to be in the ninth film. So at the beginning of the movie, when the when the bridge gets blown up and she goes flying out, I thought that was the most perfect way to end her. For, to end her. Because just like in any story, whether it's fiction and not fiction, major characters, major like important people, sometimes just die. They don't need to have. They don't need to have uh, five minutes of a the, moment. That's well, a moment. Yeah, they don't need to have a moment. Sometimes people just die. So I would have been okay with her dying that way. Which I actually thought, I was like, oh, maybe they they edited that in there. Like, maybe she was supposed to Yeah, I thought, too, maybe way. she had more scenes. So maybe they added it because she passed away, obviously, the actress. Um, that's what I thought at first. Yeah, that, yeah, they could have been, they could have been, like, she got to have more dialogue towards later in the movie, but they decided to cut it because that was probably the best way to send her off. But I don't like that. Um, even knowing that we can't use, she won't be able to be in the ninth movie. That they they put her perfectly all the way in the movie, and in the movie she was perfectly set up for to be in the ninth movie. Right. What did you think about that? Right. Well, yeah, like uh, you guys were saying that uh, she initially was planned to have a big role in the Last Jedi. Her passing away, everybody knows this, so them kind of toying with us that are they killing her off now? Are they killing her off later? I was kind of messed up, you know, just do it initially. I don't know if they have some more footage that they didn't use for Last Jedi and that they might use in the next one. And that's why, because she she's perfectly fine at the end of Last Jedi. Yeah, nothing wrong So it's like, well, if she died, the actress died. They already said they're not going to use the CGI like uh, motion capture, yeah. and no one's going to want an actress to be, you know, someone to replace her, no. like recast no. her. So I have a feeling that they may have something, some kind of footage yeah. that they might input in there that they were going to use for Last Jedi, and they're going to use it for this one. Um, I just hope it's not a thing like an opening crawl that shows, oh, uh, Leia or whatever passed away. Passed away sleeping or something. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Like, I hope they don't do that, but I think that they might actually... I think they have something. I think so too, because there was no need... If they were going to use uh, uh, motion capture or anything, CGI, uh, to to uh, send her off, there was no reason for them to announce that already, that they had, they were, they're they not going to use that. So if they're not going to use that, and they can't just completely ignore that uh, what happened to Leia? They can't just right. go on with Episode Nine and never bring her up again. Yeah, I'm so glad that they used the puppet, not 
you know, prequel your CGI. Right, right, yeah. yeah. So I really like that. Even though when he first appeared, he looked kind of weird because it took a little bit for me to adjust. Wait, is it CGI? Is it a puppet? But it took like two seconds. Yeah, I, I get that too because I did think he was CGI at first. Yeah. I thought maybe he was CGI because when I at first I felt that he was going to be CGI, I thought he was going to have more movement. So, but then you really feel him, uh, you can kind of see that he's a puppet. And he does the usual Return of the Jedi, Empire Strikes Back, like, uh, just sits there, moves around like laughs, 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 yeah. Back, yeah. 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 I so I, I was worried, I, was, I didn't know how much more he was going to be implemented in, in The Last Jedi. I don't think you heard him laugh in the prequels, did you? I think it was no. just in Return of the Jedi. No, I think so, no, he's he all serious, he's super business. serious. And the, it's yeah, always business nice to hear that. Yeah, and that's that's uh, the the persona he developed being in isolation. So right. yeah, that's how he Just died. Like, so he had to have been that. So yeah, that's perfect. What about favorite scenes? Favorite scenes. Okay, so my favorite scene, it reminded me a lot of uh, World War Two B seventeen uh, the B seventeen bombers, the the gunners that have to be in the bot in the bottom of the body. That's exactly how they were in the the beginning scene. On the yeah, the intro. They had the little, uh, the ball, you know, the, with the gunner seat. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it reminded me exactly of that. All the other bombers were destroyed. Uh, it was very bleak. It, it, it was perfect. I loved that scene. The, the, the character, uh, she dies, but she's able to blow up that, uh, giant, uh, like, the, what was it called? The Dreadnought? Dreadnought, yeah. The giant Dreadnought. Uh, so, yeah, so it was... I thought it was perfect. I thought, uh, BB-8 was in that scene, Poe was in that scene, all these other bombers, the supporting, uh, the supporting crew, they, they died, but I thought that whole scene was perfect. Including, including the destruction of the Dreadnought. That actually is why I think that uh, with Poe Dameron and uh, Rose's character together, uh, instead of her with Finn would have been better, uh, because Poe Dameron had a lot to do with him. Her sister actually died. You know, him making that call, right? Uh, you could say it was reckless, you know, whatever. Uh, but I think it. Uh, I agree with you. It was a good scene. Not my favorite. Uh, my favorite was uh, it, like the fight scene with Kylo, mm -hmm. Ray. Uh, after they take out the you know, Stoke, that whole scene was built up really good. The fighting was amazing. You I know? think that was my favorite. It was very Game of Thrones style fighting. Like they really did their work. Yeah. With yeah. with the fighting and, and they didn't cut a lot. Yeah. You know, with some of the sub fighting scenes. Even though like I did not feel that anyone was really in it, whether Ray or Kylo Ren. Like, yeah, you, like they were really in danger. They wouldn't dying, be right away. Yeah. But they were able to make it feel that way. You could you could probably you could have probably fixed that if, if uh, maybe Snow didn't die then and you had the Knights of Ren come in. Like we're we're talking about it before we start filming. Sorry, uh, we're talking if, if you have the the Knights of Ren come in, and they're taking on the the, the Praetorian guards, while you have uh, Kylo and Rey taking on Snoke. You know that might have been a little interesting maybe, but the way it was done it was really good. That was probably my favorite scene. I think that's my favorite. Yeah. And the next favorite scene of mine will be obviously the end with Luke. Yeah. When he takes on the First Order and then he even jokes about it. What am I supposed to do? Take on the First Order. Yeah, that's what it's doing in a, in a way. Yeah, in a way. In a way. Yeah. In a way. Yeah. Yeah. So, in a way. But I think my most favorite scene in the Last Jedi had to have been, uh, what was it? Commander Holder. Holder. Yeah. Holder. Commander Holder. Uh, using uh, hyperspeed into the into the First Order. To me, that scene was almost like a Christopher Nolan directed scene. It was quiet. Oh yeah. It shot. It was kind of like in, uh, Interstellar. That's right. Yeah, when it blows up and it starts spinning, it's all quiet. It's it's beautiful. I, I got that. And visually, in terms visually. of CGI, that was my favorite scene. Yeah. Too, but I think to me that that was my favorite scene shot. because it's a good shot. yeah, that shot not just because of the how beautiful you it was. You never see that either. Yeah, not really just because, effective too. Yeah, especially in Star Wars because in Star Wars like they use sound effects. So an explosion makes a sound, whereas that it was all quiet, just how you would expect, or well, realistically. So it was probably the most realistic uh, space scene they've had because everything's quiet. Where uh, Christopher Nolan, 
when he blows up their uh, in the interstellar the the ship that they have, everything's quiet, and that's exactly how it was filmed. So I thought it was beautiful, and she at the same time uh, that whole scene being beautiful, it, it served a purpose, and they were able to land on the planet because of that scene. So that's why that scene's my favorite scene. Same problem I have, like, I don't, I don't want my expectations to be met in the movie. It's predictable. And at the same time, when your expectations aren't met, you get disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's really hard to grade this movie, because what I wanted for this movie didn't happen, and if what would I would have wanted to happen happened, I would have been disappointed. So, it's really hard and that's actually the thing that a lot of people their criticism for Star through this movie is they're saying that it's not Star Wars enough and then some people are saying it's too Star Wars so nothing there's no there's no I think you can say both yeah that's what I'm saying there's no way there's no definitive answer to it I mean I like the way uh, Luke Skywalker ended um, I like they just became one with the force I guess or whatever all and I like steps of Obi Wan and Yoda, yeah. and I like that he's just like sitting there, and then you see the the classic shot from A New Hope. You can see the two. Yeah, yeah, that, I, I really love that. Scene. Thank you for reminding me. That. That, that was a, that was the opening that. scene. Of, that was the opening scene with Luke, him staring off into the two suns, and then we see that again here. At the that end was end really good. That's when he looks like go all, you know, full circle, full circle, right? Yeah. Okay, but my problem with that, I liked it a lot. I just wish it would happen differently. Obi Wan, he gets cut, right? He gets cut with the lightsaber by Darth Vader. That's how he dies. Well, he kind of, uh, for me, it was more like uh, I fulfilled my purpose. Now I'm gone. Same thing with Yoda. He fulfilled his purpose in training Luke. Luke fulfilled his purpose in lighting the spark. So at that point, he was gone. But uh, but yeah, I think uh, pretty much covered a lot for this. So we're gonna go with the grading. So like I said, mine. I already did then my non-spoiler. I gave it a, a C, it's an A minus. But um, I'll start with you, Brian. With the three S's. Okay. Is, um, definitely see it. See it, right? See yeah. it, stream it, and skip it. Right. So see it, definitely see it, stream it, buy it when it comes out. Uh, it was really good. I'm gonna give it a B plus. It was very memorable to me, but it still has its flaws. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna go with uh, <clears throat> B minus. I'm gonna say it's very good. Has a lot of problems, and I would say see it twice. See it at least yeah, twice. see it twice because you'll get surprised a lot during the movie, and you need to see it again, ex having some of those unexpected turns they take. So when you see it twice, that'll definitely help get an overall grasp on the film. So, yeah, which yes. I'll, I'll definitely watch that movie again. But, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean that that wraps up the uh, my uh, or our spoiler review of Star Wars: Episode The Last Jedi. Um, so again, I'm doing the giveaway, so make sure that you're a subscriber. Follow the instructions on the uh, description. And uh, thank you, uh, Ivan and Brian, for joining me for this. And thank you guys for watching. Uh, click the button to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.